Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am P.D. Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. In this third video tutorial on AWS DevOps, I want to show you how we can integrate our site with Amazon S3 for file storage. Uh, it's not the most efficient way to serve files, but it is great for us to integrate and host our files up in the cloud. Before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at Toronto Website Developer.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them. Each sale goes to help me to continue to develop them, keep them free and keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate uh, all the support thus far. If you can't afford the $20, but you do want to help out, please just leave a comment or a thumbs up on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. With that said, why don't we head over to our sandbox site and we're going to go over to drupal.org as well, slash project slash Amazon S3. This is the module we're going to be primarily relying upon. And you want to go ahead and download this. At the time of recording, there are two versions, uh, 7.x 2.0 beta and 7.x 1.1. I have more experience with 1.1. And truthfully, I had a lot of problems trying to set up this video tutorial using the beta uh, just because of the composer dependency. I find that sometimes problematic, especially with Windows. So I'm going to be doing this based on the 7.x 1.1, um, but they should largely be uh, the same steps. Now, that said, I'm going to go ahead and go over to read documentation because this is where they're going to tell you what dependencies you're going to actually need. So if you go to installation and setup, you'll see that they want you to have the S3 module, which is what we're talking about. But you also need to go ahead and grab the libraries module and the Amazon Web Services. So if you're using Drush, you would just go ahead and I'll clear that for you. You just do a nice Drush DL libraries, libraries. And then you just do Amazon SDK, just like that. You download those guys. And then once those guys are downloaded, you do a Drush enable libraries, AWS SDK. And I think AWS SDK comes with a UI. And then you do uh, Amazon S3. You would enable all those with a nice dash Y. And once you have those enabled, um, they want you to go ahead and get the you can probably hear Bailey behind me, uh, Amazon SDK or PHP library. So you would go ahead and when you click on that, it's going to actually download a uh, TGZ. And when you do that, you're going to want to place that in sites. You go to all and you can make a directory libraries like I have here. And I've got that in sites all. You could also do it in sites default, but sites all. Or if you have um, multi-site, you can set it up in your own individual site. But you make that directory, and then if you go into my libraries file here, you'll see uh, I have AWS SDK. What you would get is the SDK-162, and you just rename that to AWS SDK. So with that, you should now uh, have sites all libraries, AWS SDK, SDK class.php, and then you should have the other three modules set up. So once you do that, if you go ahead and you go to uh, status report under reports, you'll see that I've got AWS SDK. Uh, it's green here. I can click on the compatibility test uh, and it'll tell me that I'm actually ready to go with uh, using Amazon. So that's a good thing. That's now all kind of a quick intermediate setup. Now what you need to do is go over to the actual console here. And first thing you're going to want to do is um, you probably don't want to use your actual root user for connecting to Amazon SDK uh, or for Amazon S3 through your Drupal site. So you go over to their, um, sorry, their security service, or administration service, IAM, and you're going to create an identity. And so I've gone ahead and just created test. And why don't we create a user here together? We'll just call this test2. And go ahead and create. And you'll see that I'm going to get some security credentials here. This is the uh, access key ID as well as the secret key uh, for this particular user. You go ahead and download them. You want to save those. You're going to need those to um, connect with Amazon. So with those, yes, I want to close that. I'm just going to delete this user before I forget. So with those credentials, if you head over to configuration media and then you go to AWS SDK, you can enter them here, and you can see this is my other test user. I don't care if you see these because I'm going to delete them right after. Um, these are those credentials there. Alternatively, when you actually go to uh, Amazon SDK, it tells you you can actually add them into the conf um, 
file. So when you're setting up PHP, what you would do is, is set these up there and that way they don't sit in the database. So that's always a good thing for you to do. Uh, you'll probably want to go over that route and rather than using the UI. But just for the sake of this, I've gone ahead and used the UI. Um, so now we have our identity. Once you have your identity, what you need to do is actually attach a permission. So I've gone ahead and given my user full access to S3. That's probably not what you want to do. Um, you'd want to actually create a policy. Um, but just for the sake of this, I've just attached an existing one just because it's easier. Um, I think if you if you wanted to create your own, you just go to inline policies, click here, policy generator, and then you'd walk through. Maybe I'll do another tutorial on the actual policy generator because it can get a bit tricky as well. Uh, but there's some really fine grained controls that uh, I highly recommend you use uh, when doing this. But for the sake of this, I've gone ahead and created a S3 full access. So with that now, what I also have to do is go to S3. And so you'll see here, I've got two buckets. Um, my TWD test is the one that I'm going to be using. So let's go ahead and we'll create one ourselves. So we'll just call this uh, TWD vid test. And you're gonna choose a region that it's gonna actually store your files in. So I'm just gonna choose US standard. And we can walk through one by one. If you wanted to do logging so that you could see the detailed access logs to who's actually getting uh, into your S3 bucket, you can enable that here. And then you can create your own bucket and have those uh, sent there uh, and store them and take a look at them, but I don't really care. Uh, that's entirely up to you. So we'll go ahead and create this. So now I have TWD vid test. Now, if I head back over, I have to go to configuration and then I'm going to go to media and I'm going to go to Amazon S3. When I go to S3, it asks for my default bucket name. And so I'm entering that in here. Now, if you're using the new version uh, that was on here, I can't remember what it is now, I apologize. The 7.x2.0 version, uh, when you get here, it's going to ask you for an S3 API key and password. Uh, truthfully, I don't know what those are. Um, I thought they might be the AMI uh, username and password, but again, I did not get that far. So anyways, um, if you're using 1.1, you're just going to be asked for a bucket name here. Uh, and you can enable database caching. So you'll have the, the local file metadata cache. That's always a good idea. So you reduce the calls to S3. Um, You'd want to enable a C name here if you're using a CDN. This is where CloudFront comes in, but that's for another video tutorial. For right now, we're just going to serve our files out of S3. Um, I'm not going to go into the other details here. Uh, you can read about them and implement them. I don't think we need to. Um, so I just go ahead and, and save my configuration here. Now that I've got that saved, what I'm going to do here is go to Media and... Oops, I need to go to File System. And so you'll see here, I now have this default download method and I can choose Amazon Simple Storage Service. So we'll go ahead and save that as well. Now, if all goes well, I'm going to create a content type here and I'm just going to call this uh, pictures. So I'm going to promote this front page, all this good stuff. That's great. Let's save and add some fields. I'm going to add a picture field. And so this is going to be an image, image, and I'll save this. And I want the upload destination to be Amazon S3. So we'll go ahead and save this. And it doesn't really matter. This is all good. Whatever, I don't really care. So Amazon S3, go ahead and save the settings here. So now let's add some content. Let's add new pictures. And as always, two greatest dogs ever. We're going to choose a file here. I don't even know where my pictures are anymore. Here are my beautiful dogs. And I don't know why I'm scrolling through them to find them. Let's just, oh, there we go. Perfect. Let's go ahead and upload that. Ah, oh, we get a nice PDO exception. Does not exist. Uh, so it looks like my installation was screwed up. So I'm just going to pause the video. Sorry about that, just came back. All I had to do was actually disable the module, uninstall it, and reinstall it. The reason for that is because I had 7.x 2.0 before and I didn't actually uninstall that, so there's a conflict there. So anyways, I was able to upload, and you'll see now, um, if I hover over this, it's actually going to S3, and you'll see I get this nice thumbnail as well. It took a while there, and that's because I'm connected with uh, simple storage, which is pretty slow. But I can go ahead and I can save this now. 
and you'll see that I have this picture actually there. And if we uh, let's just inspect the element, uh, you can't see it, it's over on another page, but trust me, it is coming from S3. And so if I look at TWD test here, I can see that I have image 005.jpg, and it also has gone ahead and created the styles folder for my thumbnails. And you'll see that I've got thumbnail in here, and I've got S3, and then I've got actual my image there at two kilobits. Um, so that is pretty much it. Right now, um, I've gone ahead, I've created S3, I'm now storing my files in S3. They're all in the cloud. In the next video tutorial, we'll take a look at how we can integrate with CloudFront so that files are served a little bit quicker and they're actually globally distributed. Hopefully this helped out. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on YouTube. Let me know, greatly appreciate that. And hopefully we'll see you for the next video tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.